Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a viewer requested video. So I saw a whole bunch of comments requesting this. We're going to be doing an obsidian finish meteorite ring. So you've seen the one we did with the superconductor. This was the original. And then I had a bunch of suggestions that I do it out of Timascus, so we did the same thing there. And then of course I should have expected it. Saw a bunch of you guys commenting saying do it out of meteorite. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to put that obsidian finish on it and then we're going to etch it in muriatic acid. And that's what brings out that really cool pattern that it has. And it's specific to the Muaniana Lusta meteorites that we use. So it's really interesting. I love the patterns on there. If you have a second, take a look at the Wikipedia page for Muaniana Lusta meteorite. It's kind of a mouthful to say, but it's spelt just how it sounds, so you can just type it into Google. There's actually a lot of really interesting history to every single one of these meteorite rings we do. They've literally been floating through space for maybe even billions of years, landed in the Arctic Circle near Sweden is where it was first discovered, and it's actually that time that it's spent in space where it grew that crystal structure that you'll see after we etch it in the acid. So really interesting, a lot of cool kind of history to every single one of these rings. That's a really big reason why I love working with meteorite. So let's go ahead and get started. So for the first step, we've got our blank here. We're just going to be hollowing this out. I have these blanks cut out by the water jet channel that saves me so much time. It would literally take me like five to six hours before just going from the slab of meteorite and using a combination of different saws, hacksaw, jewelry saw. And it doesn't help that the meteorite slabs are just so raw and natural. So this is a huge time saver. So I love having these blanks here ready to go. I just simply need to hollow it out, get it to the size I want. And then you can see I'm using the boring bar to flatten out the side a little bit. I usually wait to do that with one of the left hand cutters once we've got it on our ring mandrel. But this time I just decided to do it while it was on here. It's kind of fun to just switch things up. And as you can see, it gives you the same result, just evens out that side. Now we've got it to the size we want. I made sure to do some really small passes once I was getting close to that final diameter. So you can see it's got a really nice smooth surface finish. So this is looking great so far. Now I'll be using an expanding ring mandrel to put the ring on the lathe. And if you didn't know already, I actually have these ring mandrels available on my supplies website. So that's just patrickadairsupplies.com. I've probably literally had thousands of comments of people asking where to get these. So I finally found a good consistent supplier because the guy I used to get them from, he was out of stock all of the time and then they weren't made of stainless steel. So my goal was to make a ring mandrel that was really good quality available to everyone. Like I said, they're stainless steel, which not only helps to keep it from rusting, but it's also a little bit more durable. So it'll do a better job at resisting some of the sanding and normal wear and tear that these go through. Now I've got the outside of the ring all smoothed up. We made sure to cut into it. So we've got all new meteorite exposed here. So we've got a perfect surface finish. Now I'm putting the ring back in the lathe jaws and I do have to be careful at this point. Meteorites can have little fractures and cracks all over in them. So you can't just crank it down as hard as you want. So you gotta be careful, put it in there gently. And I'm using a Dremel to round over the corners on this. This will make it way more comfortable to wear. The way it was when we started, this would literally cut your fingers if you were trying to put it on and off and it was too tight. And I of course flipped the ring around, that way we can get an even rounded edge on both sides of the ring. And then when I was done with that, I actually went back and I used a finer grit Dremel sanding drum, because I was using a pretty rough one and some of those lines may have shown up even after we etch it in acid. So you'll notice in the later shots, even though it wasn't on camera, you can see it is a bit smoother on the inside. Now it's time to do the beveling on the ring. You can see I've got this 10 pack of 320 grit sanding belts. I would typically use around 600 grit for any other ring, but because this is meteorite, when we etch it, that'll totally hide all of those sanding lines. So we're able to get away with 320 in this instance, and that makes the whole sanding process just go by a lot faster. So 
So the shapes I put into it, you've probably seen in my other videos. I've just got my belt sander and I keep adjusting the angle that I've got it set to. So I'll go in and I'll grind four or five flat faces on it per angle that I do and then just repeat that process until I'm maxed out on the angle that it can actually support. And then we're finished. It's got that obsidian faceted surface that we're going for. And of course, along the way, I'd stop and look at it and see what needed to be touched up. If it was looking a little bit weird in a certain spot, I'd hold it at a different angle by hand. And if you watch carefully, you can see me do that at a few points. That's just to fix up some of the faces on the rings that I thought would look better at a different angle. Now we're almost ready for acid, but this does have some sharp corners to it right now. So I'm taking it over to my Dremel and I'm going to be gently rounding off some of the corners just on the edge. I definitely don't want to detract from the look of the ring. So just enough that it's not uncomfortable. Now it's time for the acid etching. This is something I wanted to do. I actually did a time lapse of it etching so you can see how it goes from point A to point B. So you can see how it goes from that bare metal to this awesome etched finish that it has. So I just mixed half muriatic acid and half hydrogen peroxide. The acid eats away at the metal and then the peroxide really speeds things up. So I let that sit in there for 10 minutes, and then I come back and flip it over and let it sit for another 10. Now that it's done, I'm pulling it out of the acid, and then in this cup here, I've got water mixed with baking soda. That'll neutralize the acid so that it's safe to touch. And now we're done. So here in this close-up shot, and you can see just how cool the different angles and edges on this ring look. It's got so many different faces, and so there's a bunch of different lighting sources we've got in the room, and so you can see it kind of reflects everything. And it makes for a really cool, almost like ancient worn effect that it has. I think the etched surface and patterns that it has go perfectly with the obsidian finish we put on it. And you can see in these photos I took with my white box that I actually only used one light source here and I didn't use a diffuser and that was to make the light kind of harsh. And the reason I do this is because this ring looks better with harsh lighting and that's kind of how lighting looks like normally in real life. It really helps get those edges to pop. So you can see all the different faceted surfaces of the ring. So it's actually kind of challenging to photograph this ring, but I think I was able to get some good results here. But be sure to let me know what you think in the comments. Which of the three obsidian finished rings do you like the best? It's kind of like, the holy trinity. We've got the superconductor ring, the Timascus ring, as well as now we've got the meteorite ring. So those three together, and you can see them all in this photo right here, just make for one epic collection of rings. I put all three of them on my hand and it's just kind of cool to have all of them on there. But anyways guys, let me know if you have any suggestions in the comments. There might be a fourth or even fifth material that we want to do a finish like this on, but I don't know. These are kind of like my three favorite materials and I definitely don't want to overdo it with the obsidian finished rings. So let me know what you think. And if you're interested in purchasing a ring, I've got a link to my website down below. And for all of you interested in making rings yourself, like I mentioned earlier, I do have my supplies website up and running and I finally have those ring mantles available for pre-order. So check that out. And then you can also see three little buttons that pop up on your screen. On the right, that's just the PAD logo. That's where you can subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos like this. And then in the bottom right, that is a video that YouTube is personally recommending to you. So based on what you're interested in, they recommend one of my videos to you. So I think you'll enjoy that. And then of course, in the bottom left, that's a link to my website. Hope you guys really enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.